Hey Dave, hope you're well. You have Yoshi starting in left field. How have you found him to be adjusting to the team and working with the staff? Um, I, I think as, as well as we could have hoped for. Um, you know, just kind of getting to know his personality and he's actually uh, pretty jovial and easygoing. Um, and so that's been good. The players, the interaction has been great. Just kind of catching him up to speed uh, with the coaches. And so I just felt to get him out there, get his feet wet with get both feet wet at the same time, just jump in is the best way to do it. So hadn't played in a while, but you know, he's a pro and I just want him to go out there and just be himself and help us uh, win a baseball game. And it's great to see Chris Taylor back out there, but how would you describe his performance just really over the last few weeks? Very consistent. Um, he, he plays uh, every at bat like it's his last, plays every pitch like it's the last pitch, uh, both offensively, defensively on the bases. And um, so the production, what he's doing is no surprise to me. Um, he's a glue guy. Uh, he makes my job a lot easier and gives a lot of other guys, his teammates, uh, runways and other opportunities because of his versatility and unselfishness. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. Next question from Dave Vassa. Go ahead. Hey, Dave, McKinstry has not been in the Oklahoma City lineups the last couple of days. Has anything changed with the timeline of him going there to play no, rehab no, games? No, he wasn't supposed to go until uh, later this week. Um, so it's kind of where it's at. He was supposed to go sometime later this week, Dave. And where's Bellinger at as far as all that? He's probably going to go out over the weekend and, and join him in OKC, kind of with uh, McKinstry. Okay, and are you optimistic that by the time you guys come back from the next road trip that they may be ready to rejoin you? Um, more opt I don't know exactly the dates, but I'm more optimistic that Zach would arrive before Cody, just because the fact that Cody's been out um, much longer. And is that one thing that people are taking for granted, Dave, just when you're talking about Cody, not only – you know, the injury of the broken leg, but just the fact that he didn't get many at-bats in spring because of the shoulder surgery? Absolutely. And I think that that's something that we as an organization are very mindful of. And it's easy to get him back as soon as possible and pencil him in and expect it to be a 900 OPS, but it just doesn't happen like that. So um, Cody needs to go play and feel good and take competitive at-bats, make sure his timing is right. And um, when that time comes, and he'll be ready to help us. <coughs> Thank you, Dave. Yeah. Next question is from Jorge Castillo. Go ahead. Dave, just keep it up on the injury front here. Uh, when is Gonson going to throw his three innings? It was supposed to be this week, and it's supposed to be a three-inning simulated game. So, uh, you know, if we're looking at Tuesday, I, I don't know exactly, already, but I would guess at the end of the week. So Thursday, Friday is probably a safe bet. And Dave, with the Sasugo, um, you know, the thing is, um, you know, people saying that he's having a lot of trouble with velocity. The numbers say it as well. How, how does someone improve in that department? I, I think it's uh, there's a little bit more going into that. I think on the surface to look at struggles with velocity, I think a lot of it um, has come with kind of mechanical changes, trying to understand, you know, there's a lot going on to it into it as far as the communication part of it and his swing being different than what it used to be. So I think for us uh, is to kind of start and get him back to where he was uh, as a comfortable, productive, professional hitter. And we'll go from there. So I think right now we're just going to kind of start with a new baseline and see where we go. And uh, just with Pujols, um, have you and uh, Albert uh, reminisced about the 2004 World Series at all? <laughs> no. No, we have not talked about the uh, 2004. Um, so 2004, um, yeah, he was, uh, yeah, he was over there. So we haven't talked. And you know what, the, the irony, so I don't have a whole lot to say about the World Series because I didn't get a plate appearance. So um, I got the ring, but uh, there's not a whole lot for me to say to him about that. But we've had some other postseason battles that, unfortunately, he got the best of me. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> Next question is from Eric Steven. Go ahead. Dave, um, excuse me, uh, your game notes list TBA now as Thursday starter. Are you holding Trevor Bauer back for the Giants? 
Um, that's a good thought, Eric, possibly. Okay, and then, so I guess if that's the case, that would be your bullpen, your bullpen day would be Thursday rather than uh, Friday? Yeah, that's a, that's a good thought. That's something we're uh, thinking through. Yeah, absolutely. And then uh, with, with Bruce Dark Gratterall, um, is, well, what's, what's the next step for him? Well, um, I, I think as we speak, Eric, he's on the mound, and uh, it's a 15-pitch, 20-pitch uh, exercise on the mound. So we'll see how he comes out of that. And uh, what the next progression will be, we'll know. It's kind of contingent on how he's feeling. Okay, thanks. You got it, Eric. Next question is from Fabian Ardaya. Go ahead. Hey, Dave, uh, what's the two go? I mean, last year, I uh, sort of came coming into adjusting to Major League Baseball after the shutdown and dealing with the 60 game season and then sort of having sort of a disjointed start of this year. Is that all stuff that you're sort of figuring into the mix of? And sort of how much do you sort of have to sort of settle him down and give him that sort of runway to sort of figure some of the things out that you want with him? Yeah, um, I, I think it's, it's, I think uh, settling him down, knowing that uh, we believe in him as a person, as a player, uh, he can hit. Uh, his actions are real. Uh, the ball comes off the bat, and uh, he's a professional hitter. So uh, last year was kind of funky for, for many reasons, obviously. Uh, inconsistency of playing time, mechanics, and things like that. So I think that he's in a good spot. Um, we're going to keep working with him and, and kind of empowering him to kind of understand what he feels uh, what he does to make him the best hitter he can be. Um, and, and we'll go with that. So my job is to get him at bats and try to get as consistent as I can with respect to the roster, the lineup. And uh, But he's open to any role, which is great. Have you noticed that uh, with players, whether it be guys who are who were in the outside last year or made their debuts last year, just uh, sort of that adjustment period is a little bit different than it has been in a normal year, just considering all the other circumstances? Yeah, I, I think that we're all sort of creatures of habit and you know, logging a certain amount of at-bats or playing time and to start, stop, it just kind of a lot is really disjointed. And so um, that's why I think that some guys that had outlier great years or outlier bad years, I think you got to kind of throw those out and kind of look at more of the, the more career track record. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. Next question is from Ron Kavner. Go ahead, Ron. Hey, Dave. Um, on the Sutsugo subject in general, um, you guys had talked about wanting to, you know, get the hitting hitting coaches with them, and maybe you could kind of see if you could unlock something with them. And I'm just kind of curious how hard that is to do in the middle of the season, and, and how you go about doing that while also obviously trying to, you know, win games. Yeah, I, I think you know part of it is he's not going to be in there every day. So there's a lot of time to kind of work on the mechanics part of it. Um, I, I just want him in there tonight to play and, and compete and try to take good at bats, which I expect he will. And, you know, we're prepared for whatever result. Um, but I think that the mechanical part of it is there's time to work. Our hitting coaches are, are looking forward to work with him. Uh, Yoshi's looking forward to it. And a lot of it is just trying to use the big part of the field and, and not get too aggressive to the pool side. So, um, you know, getting back to what he used to do, I, I just don't think it's going to be such a, a tall ask. Got it. And um, with, with Chris Taylor, um, obviously he had the, the back thing earlier this year and, and now the wrist. Um, is he a guy that it's, it's, you know, hard for him to maybe take out of a lineup and, and do you have to be kind of extra cautious with, with, with any of the stuff he's dealing with? Yes, Chris is a very hard guy to take out of the lineup uh, because he does so many things well. Um, yesterday he wanted to play, and I just felt that it was better for him, for the Dodgers, short and long term, to keep him out of the lineup, and that's never easy to do with CT. So um, he's there at third base tonight. Um, so, yeah, I just feel comfortable with him anywhere on the diamond. We got time for one more. Go ahead, Juan. Hey, Dave, with Yoshi, given the fact that you have – uh, Chris Taylor playing third, splitting with, with Turner, and then at first you have Pujols now. How much do you see Yoshi maybe playing third or first uh, moving forward? Yeah, I, I can see some third base. Um, I, I think that right now with Dino, just trying to get him accustomed to the uh, overshift with the left-hand hitter to uh, play on the dirt, you know, more second base straight up to kind of get used to that. 
potential pivots, taking grounders there, throwing it to first base from there where he's throwing it across the diamond from third base. So getting him comfortable with that. But I like him at third base. I like him in left field. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, guys.